Hi everyone, it's Dr. Dickinson. And I'll now be discussing what the mathematics practice standards are. If you're on our Google slideshow, you can click on this link, it's a hyperlink. It will take you to the eight standards for mathematical practices. Now, as classroom teachers, we know that students learning and what they're able to do goes far beyond what they're able to just show us on the test. A lot of the things that we learn about our students come out through the discussions that we have, when students are working collaboratively, when they're presenting their ideas. So while we're thinking about how we design instruction, we also want to be thinking about the mindset or the thinking that we want to develop in our students. And going over these eight practice standards are really going to help us in terms of the instructional decisions that we make. Now, these standards from student mathematical practices don't just sit within the elementary school levels. These practices extend all the way through high school. So think about it. If we start teaching our students in kindergarten about how to make sense of problems and persevere in solving them, what do you think they're going to be like by the time they get to high school? That's right, students are going to have a lot more confidence in problem solving. They'll have a set of skills, they'll know some strategies, and they'll be able to move forward with a lot more confidence and less reluctance. So let's unpack each of these eight standards. Our first practice is number one, make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Now for our students, they need to understand the problems that we're teaching them. That means that we should help our students develop skills and strategies that will help them in problem solving. By doing this, they'll have multiple ways to attack a problem. And over time, they'll be able to persevere in their task. That means that they'll, they'll continue to work at a problem, continue to find different ways to attack it until they've solved the problem. As teachers, we need to let go of how we were taught mathematics and give our students the time they need to struggle. I know this is hard because this is really hard for me when I started teaching, but I use a bite your tongue approach when it comes to math learning. That means I need to really be uncomfortable with silence. I need to ask questions that get my students to do the thinking and get them to do the learning. We do this providing our students with wait time, giving them time to try multiple strategies and providing opportunities for them to solve in multiple ways. So maybe we're gonna show them different tools or give them different opportunities to solve using either concrete models or using other digital tools that will help them in problem solving. Number two. Reasoning abstractively and quantitative. So for our students, what do you think this means? How do we reason abstractly? Well, for a lot of our kids, mathematics is pretty abstract, but we can make it have meaning when we provide our students with representations. We provide them with pictures, symbols, and words to make sense of what they're doing. So that means math is highly contextualized. It's not just situated in some abstract problem, but it's in a sense that makes connections to who they are. So if we're talking about finding an array, they're thinking about arrays that are in toys that they play with, or Legos, or Minecraft, or anything else that your students are really interested in. And we help decontextualize problems as well. We help them find the understanding and the meanings of problems that they're encountering. So that means the students are gonna break apart problems, they're gonna dissect them, they're gonna have different strategies that they can use to help them make sense of it. So teachers, we need to provide access, access to different representations and tools for them to use. We need to give them many ways to solve problems, whether they're doing it with drawings or manipulatives or working online. And we need to ask students questions to help support their reasoning and give them an opportunity to ask questions as well. All right, math practice number three is helping our students construct viable arguments and critique reasoning of others. All right, our students need to talk about math. They need to 
not just do the math, but look at the math and apply the math and create an argument for why they think their answer makes sense. So this is really where we not just teach them the vocabulary, but get them to explicitly use the vocabulary so they can make sense of the vocabulary and actually apply the vocabulary. We're going to do this with math language. Maybe we'll provide them with sentence stamps. Maybe we'll provide them with digital resources and tools for them to actually use language and not just sit there and do math problems. Okay, I know. You all remember the days when you walked into your math classroom and there was probably about 30 to 40 math problems on the board waiting for you to solve. Those days are gone. If one or two problems, if that's all you do, that's great. Students are using the math language. They're solving their problems in multiple ways. They're sharing their work with the others. They're listening, listening, and critiquing each other. And then they're doing the math and they're getting confident and they're feeling good about what they're doing. And that's really what math should be all about. Model with mathematics. Your students are going to love this practice. This practice is awesome because it gives them an opportunity to show what they know and apply the math in the real life. They're going to create real world math problems of their own using their own mathematical knowledge. We're going to get them an opportunity to organize data and understand the world. This is about connecting math to the real world. Tools. Math practice standard number five is about using appropriate tools strategically. We're going to give them a lot of choices to use tools, not just base 10 blocks, not just paper tools that they're cutting out, virtual manipulatives, and we're going to give them a choice. They can use what they want. They can make drawings. They can decide to use a ruler or they can use other tools that help them make sense of what the concepts that we're teaching them about will give them autonomy and a chance to explore and use the tools. Just because it's not a tool to you doesn't mean it's going to not be a tool to them. Let them choose the tools. Let them create their tools. They love making tools. You can bring Makey Makey and all the creative spaces to your math program by allowing your students to work with tools. Attend to precision. This is a difficult one because we have to be really mindful about what's happening and what people are seeing in the classroom. And we're gonna catch ourselves, okay? We're gonna catch ourselves and saying, did I just really say that? But remember, those are opportunities for us to grow. If you have a hard time using the mathematical vocabulary and the terminology, put them in a chart, have it up there, review it every day, help yourself develop the mindset that you wanna move your students towards and get your students to use the exact language that they need to use and get students to explain exactly what they're doing. This takes time, it takes a lot of patience, and takes a lot of practice for us as well. So be gentle with your students and be gentle with yourself and make sure you're attending to precision. All right, number seven, look for and make use of structure. This is where our students are going to start looking for patterns and they're going to use reasoning to help them solve complex problems. So they'll look for patterns and will help them understand what to do next. This is all about what we're talking about, is giving them an opportunity to discuss and share their patterns and structures that are emerging when they're looking at problems with intent. We're looking at problems over time. They're looking for connections. And finally, math practice standard number eight, Look for and express regularity in repeating reasoning. Students should be able to generalize their thinking. They should be able to make connections. They should also be able to check the reasonableness of their results and make sure that you're giving them plenty of opportunities to estimate, to reason, to critique, to look for connections. Encourage your students to discuss their regularity in their reasoning and don't just do the same problem to generalize to other solutions, but help them make those connections across subject areas as well. All right, so we've looked at those eight wonderful practices. What do you think? Are you ready to see it in action? Click on this video and you will see me using the eight practice standards. I look forward to seeing your feedback. So make sure you add comments at the bottom of this YouTube video about how you see Dr. Dickinson using the eight mathematical practice standards in action.